All right, welcome back to Project Seawolf. So obviously we're back on the boat. I had a great time in Palm Springs, California. I got uh, one new bird and I had to move my fiance's stuff across the state and that took a lot of time. But super happy to be back on the boat and the weather is kind of still mixed. It's still snowing, still sometimes sunny, sometimes 70 degrees, sometimes 20. Yeah, pretty hectic, but uh, yeah, collecting stuff for the uh, the the bottom work to be done. I got I got some bottom paint today and some barrier coat today. Um, they sent me the wrong color, so maybe instead of a light blue bottom, it's gonna be kind of like a purpley blue bottom because I can't return it for some reason. So yeah, collecting the materials. So what needs to happen today is I need to finish cutting that out and I'll probably start working on getting the old autopilot out. The old autopilot's like totally fried, needs to come out anyway. And uh, that's all gonna be in preparation for dropping the rudder. Cause uh, before I want to do the bottom of the boat, I want to I want to learn all the materials and learn the whole system on the rudder. And um, the rudder needs to come out anyway to inspect the posts and uh, and bearings and stuff. So yeah, I drove 11 hours last night, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So just uh, run on fumes, but we're gonna get it done. <laughs> So I'm still planning on getting the full Simrad kit and um, I found out that the transducer that comes with the Simrad kit is transom mounted and doesn't require a through hole, which means I don't need to have any through holes if I don't want to. If I have a post back here that puts the transducer down there and all that feeds into a tablet or, or your, uh, well, the main display, but it, it also wirelessly connects to tablet and phone. So that's pretty cool. Until the mask comes off, I have no idea how it's attached. There's a beam inside that looks like it goes across there, but <laughs> I don't know if it's like fiberglass or, or metal or, or what. And um, I would really like to see what the condition of that is. So uh, I think that will come when the mast comes down. Sorry, I just noticed it was like super tangled up up there. This, this small thing. Lovely evening in Anacortes with the sunset and the clouds and the snow and the hills. Taking a break from all that fiberglass. So as I've been working on this, I think this is more attached than the one that was in the V-Birth. And because it doesn't, it doesn't move as much as the one in the V-Birth, so I bet it's integrated into this wall up here. So I'm cutting out these sections and if it comes free after I cut lines here, then uh, that'll be good. And I can just trim it back to where it's structural and leave it there and maybe tab it in more. Uh, also down here, they kept, uh, I think the house battery bank, uh, gel batteries. Uh, the wood is really bad, pretty rotted out. Uh, so that'll need to be replaced. Oop, almost fell in there. And also preparing the engine for removal. I've kind of put things together. There are so many components to this motor that um, it's going to be quite the task just to unbolt things so that I can get it out. I don't know if you can pressure wash this, but I... <laughs> I would love for it to just be clean <laughs> when I take it out and give it to the next person. Yeah, everything that is attached to it is very corroded. The engine itself runs fine, but man, there are so many little components that are screwed in to the walls and that's gonna be quite the remodel in here. I can't even get at the cockpit drains because they're just wrapped up in the exhaust system. And uh, looking ahead to the prop shaft someday, <laughs> at these bearings down here, I can see pink, which is not good. I think up top, uh, near where all that white stuff is. Yeah, and I wonder if that's a packing gland there. I'm not too sure. But man, it will be nice to have this out so that I can get at all the stuff in here. There is just so much 
grease and mold and stuff I would love to just blast off right now. And there are so many wood elements that are just rotting. <laughs> that need to go or be replaced or, you know, be redesigned. So like I said, like, there's the mast and the mast sits on top of this here. And I don't know if, I don't know what this is made out of, if it's metal or wood or what, but it's just this big beam that goes across. And I'm thinking that the entire mast is just held up by the superstructure. Cause the superstructure is like several inches thick of solid fiberglass. So it's like, I mean, pretty robustly built, but still it's kind of concerning that it doesn't have a compression post. I, just, I mean, I see why there isn't one because it would just be like right in the walkway, but you'd think that would somehow be distributed that way. And the, the beam is not even like connected to this, these, this bulkhead that goes across here. I mean, this, provide structure to the superstructure that is ultimately holding up the mast. But I don't, <laughs> you know, I, I suppose it's just a, such a funky design. Another design idea that actually Dan had, the owner of the Yorktown over there <laughs> that we toured a couple episodes back. If we were talking like, I mean, this is great for insulation, the inside, but if there's a crack in the hall or something, I can't get at it and um, it's really difficult. So there's, I mean, it's also, I, I don't think it takes any load off of the hall or the deck. So I'm thinking, this is Dan's idea as well. Uh, or yeah, originally Dan's idea, but I, I really like it. But basically like to cut out this, these liner panels and tab, tab in this and this and make sure those are solid and anything that is attached like here or here make sure those are solid and replace this with a insulated sandwich of fabric that you can clip on and it, uh, i'm thinking like gunmetal gray or something and that will provide the insulation and make the hull immediately accessible and when i'm sailing in the tropics i can take it off and bleed heat more and i just thought that was just a brilliant idea I have to think about how that would handle the uh condensation because the hull collects condensation which is why you don't usually paint the inside of the halls because it needs to breathe the, the condensation man i really like that idea because because then you can get at everything in the hall everything is still solid because it's against the hall and bracing the hall and you can choose whether or not you want the insulation depending on the time of year or the or the place that you're sailing given that we have sail rights now uh sewing machines that would be a fun big, probably maybe thousand dollar project to uh, to do, but I think that that'd be a good replacement for this liner that you can't access the hall with. And that would allow me to seal off these uh, separate storage areas and make them watertight in case anything did crack in the hall here or something punched a hole in there. I'd be able to seal off those with rubber gasket around here and dog down on um, some panels. And uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be separated by um, bulkheads here, here, there, here, here. And uh, that'll prevent the water coming in. Because right now the water can just get up in between here and sink the boat that way. Yeah, just thoughts. See, see what anybody else says about that. So today, today while I'm working on this, I'm also responding to comments uh, from the uh, the episode I announced the T-shirt giveaway and discussing how to redesign the V breath so that she still sails while there's not enough weight in the front from or being weighted down by the 300 feet of chain that I want to have in there. So I'm I'm thinking a lot about redesign the design of the V breath. Okay, so I got got this half out and this half is still in and I started vacuuming up and around and I noticed that that's all water underneath. There's just, let's see if I can find a, a light. Okay, there is just a huge amount of standing water in underneath this. Um, 
there's a bunch of fiberglass floating in it but but yeah there is a couple inches of water down there yikes now i'll get that sucked up and uh this out so hey that's probably all from hardware and stuff dripping in through the anchor locker and then uh, there might be a drain that drains it to the main bilge but there isn't or it might be plugged or something honestly i'm not too surprised because there's so much just crud underneath this it's, like i said there's like soil underneath it and that definitely would clog anything that would connect the two bilges Jeez, yeah, can you imagine going up and down waves and then all this water sloshing back and forth all along down here? And uh, up up the walls if you're on attack. <laughs> yeah. See, this is, this is why it's important to be able to see what the heck's going on behind all these places. And, you know, you could be having a lot of water in there. All right, I have exposed the midship goo lagoon. Let's see. Wow. Yeah, so underneath that midship tank thing is is the goo lagoon. And it is fairly thick and it has a lot of interesting stuff in it. I've already seen Q-tips, um, nuts and bolts, mostly delaminated parts of, um, what was that? Mostly delaminated, delaminated fiberglass. It's a zip tie. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. All right, as cool as it is, uh, the midship goo lagoon has to go. I'm sorry. I hope it becomes a meme in the channel. This one, uh, this one's for the boys. I'm gonna get this before it overflows because that was actually a lot of water. Um, yeah, you can see Q-tips, bits of wood, all sorts of crud. Great success. Okay, and on that bombshell, um, <laughs> I think I'm gonna call it a night. Um, last night I drove 11 hours from Olympia to Spokane to Marysville and then up here to the boat so that I could work on the boat. And that was from, Ooh, oh my gosh. That Honda without a muffler really spooked the camera, I guess. 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Slept a little bit this morning and then came to the boat to start working on it and we got a lot done still. Tomorrow, I think uh, Nicole's gonna try to come out and um, we'll knock some of that wiring out and maybe clean up a little bit. There's only a little bit left of this tank. I don't, I don't know what to call it, but uh, the midship goo lagoon is pretty cool. Not too bad it's gone. Um, yeah, and so cleaning up uh, the stuff down there, letting things dry out a little bit tonight and tomorrow will probably be good. So yeah, thanks for watching. If we haven't hit 100 patrons yet, still giving out t-shirts for the first 100. And even then, probably gonna continue giving out t-shirts to new patrons. I've, I've enjoyed the process. And um, you know, I've had a couple today, but still, I don't I don't think uh, by the time this comes out, I'll probably, probably haven't hit it yet. So um, all that money goes to getting the mass taken out. And so we can start working on the deck stuff and getting ready for the big fiberglass event and fixing the bigger problems on the boat besides like basic design things. So yeah, thanks for sticking around. I'm gonna clean up and then uh, in the morning kind of come right back out and uh, that episode will be out uh, next Saturday after this one. So see you soon.